Good day. Today I'm going to talk about how to graph a lot of functions, many of which are built into the Scratch interface. First, I'm going to make variables to represent x and y. Those are the variables on the Scratch stage. If you remember, x on the Scratch stage goes from negative 240 to positive 240, and the y-axis goes from negative 180 to positive 180. And these variables will conceptually represent this concept. As with any project, we need to start with the when green flag is clicked. In this case, since we want to draw graphs on the screen, we'll need to be using the pen extension. So I'm going to add that right now. When we start the program, we're going to want to clear any previous graphs. So we're going to use the erase all block in order to accomplish this. We'll also want to make sure that the pen is up so that when we're initial initializing the original position of our function that we don't somehow draw on the screen when we're trying to move the pen to the right place. As you can see, our sprite is an empty pointer. And it makes a lot of logical sense that our sprite, that our function would start at negative 240, 0. Although you could change this value to reflect the function that you're working with. So if you're working with a trigonometric function, for example, you might put the trigonometric function of the x position. We'll also set our x variable to negative 240. And again, we could set our y variable to reflect the same, the function that we're working with, as up here. So considering that we're moving from negative 240 to 240, that's a total of 200, 480 moves. My apologies. And so we'll use a repeat 480 block in order to make these movements. First, I guess we'll pick a certain function to work with. Let's start with, and again, as I mentioned, there's a lot of different functions to work with here. But let's first start with the absolute value function. It's a particular favorite of mine. So the absolute value, and here we'll go with the absolute value of the x position. Again, these are also available as data blocks in real time. We're just using variables so that we'll be able to eventually combine them later into a go to x block. And I'll fill that out with the necessary variables in the meantime. Here, we'll also use an ABS, but this time we'll just use the x variable that we set. So this kind of layup is probably is going to be present within our block itself. But first, we need to put the pen down so that we'll actually start drawing the graph. Pete here. So change x by 1. So we're moving in increments of 1. Of course, you could make this shorter. But the shorter you make it, the longer it's going to take to run the total program. And also, if you make x shorter, you're going to need to, for example, if you halved x, you would multiply the number of repetitions you would do in order to make it through the entire x-axis space available on the stage. So we're going to change x by 1, set the y value to the new y value based on the new x value, and then watch the rest of the graph generate. All right, so it looks like that it automatically ran something, but we're going to try and run something from scratch. And there we go. We can see that the absolute value graph is generating. Makes sense. If I pick a negative value, it's going to give me the positive value back. If I pick a positive value, it's going to give me that positive value back. Makes a lot of sense. All right. So let's try another function, this time a trig function. These are often characterized by oscillations. It's, it looks like a wave, but it 
means that there's a lot of troughs and peaks. It goes up and down. It fluctuates between the same values. And so in order to make this a little bit more visible, because between zero, it all fluctuates between negative 1 and 1 for sine of x, what you'll notice is that between those two values, you know, on our scratch stage that goes from, let's say, negative 180 to 180, negative 1 to 1 is a pretty short range, so you won't see those values. So I'm going to increase the amplitude, as it's called, of the functions. Just multiply it by 50 so that we'll be able to see those os oscillations that I'm talking about. So we'll want to replace this block here with this too. And as you can see, when I didn't replace this one up here, you got this little extraneous line. So let's put this up here and replace this block. We'll get rid of these two. Perfect. So, hmm. It still seems like we got some of that extraneous mixture, but regardless, you can kind of see these troughs and peaks within this trigonometric function as it moves through and cosine will look very similar to this. Change these. That's also characterized by troughs and peaks. If you were in rainbow mode, and that will, in this case, generate it nearly instantaneously. All right. That's a quick introduction to graphing functions in Scratch. Next time, we'll talk about how you can graph functions in Scratch that are of your own making. So we'll utilize the custom blocks available within the interface, interface to define our own methods in order to create our own functions and their corresponding graphs. Hope you enjoyed.